Hi, this is Shadi. Today I'm going to be discussing Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in relationship with Japanese Jiu Jitsu. I know a lot of people disconnect the two, saying things like Japanese Jiu Jitsu is outdated. Also, there was no sparring and it's very subpar and uh, they only did kata with wooden swords and such and frankly this is not only inaccurate but it's historically just ignorant on so many levels and i'll explain why and once you know why you will see that gracie jiu-jitsu as well as brazilian jiu-jitsu but more importantly gracie jiu-jitsu has a lot of common traits with old jiu-jitsu now that's not to say that it's bad or it's good or this is better than this no this is simply you have two brothers carlos and elio gracie who are a product of their generation and that's the simple fact so the thing with old japanese jiu-jitsu that it had some traits that somewhat in kodokan either reduced or completely disappeared uh, and frankly i'm very happy that this happened for a lot of reasons so first one being uh, it was a form of struggle and wrestling more than a tool to really craft a human being i know this sounds uh, very abstract like how do you go to the dojo and then all of a sudden you're a better human being no there were many things that were done before lectures people discussed people talked and also people were just generally more ready to learn from their teachers and also there were things that were discussed and uh, if you look at Jigoro Kano and his lectures not only in judo but also in universities you had also uh, Kyuzo Mifune so the aspect of sitting down and genuinely discussing values much like philosophy schools it was really a thing and that's something that I genuinely cherish and I wish it is still there. Valente Brothers, they do such things and I'm very I'm very glad that they actually cherish this part. Now, when it comes to uh, old jiu-jitsu, like I said, it was a form of struggle. This is what Kano called it. He said to Gunji Koizumi that with sports-like behavior and when you make the so-called randori the only part of it, uh, you are making it more into a sport and it will revert back to the struggles that was Japanese Jiu-Jitsu or all Jiu-Jitsu before the founding of the Kodokan. So clearly Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, they fought and they fought a lot. Schools challenged each other all the time. Here you see this clip is a Gracie family going into a Judo school and they not only they participated but they also challenged them they they sparred with them to to show them who they are basically you can see the logo on their back and not only that they fought other styles as well so i'm sure many of you are familiar with the phenomenon of dojo yaburi you know yaburi mas or breaking into a dojo it was a way of going in challenging and uh, if you win you take all the students basically because if another school beat me and showed me what they were i would go with them and uh, that thing happened a lot back in the uh, old days so kano jigoro did away with this tradition sure uh, kodokan students did participate in competition especially when it came to the police and he spread judo through means of education showing doing demonstrations talking about the values rather than breaking in and showing who's the boss he, he completely changed the approach and he did something very beautiful now i understand that this can seem very abstract to a lot of people so gracie family went back to the <laughs> classics and they did that and they were very successful um they proved that uh, this art their the expression or their expression of jiu-jitsu their school was clearly a good uh, school in terms of other fighting styles and martial arts all that led to not only valley tudo but also all the way to the ufc in the 90s although i do wish other 
men like Yoshida, etc., participated. Now, the th second thing that was uh, a big priority for Japanese Jiu Jitsu was self defense. All their books are randori section and self defense section, and they were very big on it. The self defense section was as big, or not, if not bigger, than the randori section. And this is something Gracie Jiu Jitsu really trains. Any second generation Gracie, be it Hoyler, uh, Helsen, etc., they still maintain self defense practice with uh, resistance and uh, other things like wearing gloves during the, on the ground, etc. And of course, as well as competitive sparring with sports rules. And uh, that's not to say that Kano did not want this. Clearly, if you've read a little bit of Mind Over Muscle, you would know that Kano wanted to fend off attacks, create a better human being, which will result in a better society and giving back. So, like I said, Carlos and Elio Gracie were a product of their generation and it clearly shows and they've maintained a lot of it. Now, um, the thing that really strikes me as very Japanese Jiu Jitsu is the lineages. Not only you have the Gracie name, which is very big and their schools and uh, a lot of people are proud to be Gracie, you know, uh, Hicks and Gracie black belt or whatever. You have also people uh, that are like completely different. Like Carlson Gracie Black Belt. I'm from this academy, and this academy traces its its lineage back to Carlson. And they talk about these lineages. It's all like those old Ryuha. Like I'm I'm working on this book, and uh, it will come out soon. And he dedicates the author dedicates. It's well over 120 years ago that was this book was written, and he dedicates a massive section to just the founders and talking about lineages and the only time I do think about a lineage or I hear about it it's in the context of jiu-jitsu Gracie jiu-jitsu or any other jiu-jitsu school today they still hold that tradition to a high degree of value show me a Kano that competes and he's holding the name high it doesn't exist even Kano himself not a single medal in his closet and uh, he had other goals. He was more uh, concerned with education, sure. He was a technical master. He knew a lot. He sparred a lot, etc. But he had a different mission. His students, on the other hand, did the competitions. They did the demonstrations. They did the presentations on many different levels, not just the going around and and beating people up. So in many ways... Uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, whatever, still holds a lot of elements uh, of old Japanese Jiu-Jitsu that are gone in Judo. Some of them, they should not be gone, like the self-defense aspect that Kano clearly wanted to keep, but a lot of things are still present in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu while not in Judo anymore. So, for example, getting a black belt every country in the world you have to go through the federation there's prerequisites that are lined up uh, very common with a lot of countries for the first degree second degree black belt uh, you can't just you know have those uh, videos where your teacher is surprising you with the black belt and everyone is no it doesn't exist you have to go through prerequisites by the federation exams for example in japan nobody can give you the black belt except the kodokan not the all japan nothing it's the kodokan so um the idea of lineages and etc it's completely gone so and uh, showing you are better than set style or that and going in and challenging other ideas it's just not in judo judo it's more about you know being an, an example rather than uh, challenging and dominating and it is. It was a completely revolutionary approach at the time. Also, you have the values that were honed into it, not just the struggle form that Kano talked about it. So, if you have anything to add, let me know down below. This was Shady, and thank you for listening.